Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm mixing it up a little. I'm finally joining the world of 3D printing. I feel it was finally time to dive into the technology, so why don't you join me as I learn about 3D printing from the ground up? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. 3D printing isn't very dangerous, but you can burn yourself if you're not careful. Follow the manufacturer's instructions, or in lieu of those, use common sense. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these things, then don't. Now, let's get started. Over the past 65 years, I've built hundreds of projects, gizmos, and contraptions. They all had one thing in common. I started with big pieces of material and whittled them down into smaller pieces of material. This is called subtractive manufacturing. Now I'm about to dip my toe into additive manufacturing, i.e. 3D printing. Why is this video any different than the hundreds of other 3D printing videos? Well, this one will document my real-world experience in learning about this new technology. It isn't hard, but there are no unicorns farting rainbows here. I ran into a few difficulties that I hope you'll be able to avoid if you stay tuned. I started my journey by determining what I want to accomplish with 3D printing. I'm not into models, crafts, or tchotchkes. Rather, I wanted to learn more about 3D modeling and G-code, and to make jigs, fixtures, and tools to make my other project work more successful and enjoyable. Oh, and I needed to make a replacement foot for a dish drainer. After a review of the literature, you know you can find just about anything on the internet, I decided the Creality Ender 3 S1 was a printer for me. Plus, Micro Center was having an outstanding sale. This printer has a direct drive extrusion head which allows for better control for more flexible materials like TPU, which is what I needed for my dish drainer foot. It also has dual motor control of the Z-axis, which means it's more accurate. It's a little more expensive than some of the earlier Creality printers, but the upgrades are supposedly worth it. I was working on my Pico PIO interrupt videos when I purchased the printer, so I didn't get around to unboxing it for a couple weeks. In addition, I had to make room in my office for the printer. This involved setting up a virtual XP machine on my Windows 10 PC so I could decommission two old Windows XP machines. I also had to rework and relocate my NAS as well as move my MIDI keyboard back out of the office. And of course, I threw out my back, lifting up the overly stuffed bags of trash into the trash bin, which added another week of delay. Finally, it was time for unboxing. The Ender 3 S1 is very well packed. As you can see, the X and Z gantry is completely assembled, and there are only a few other components to install. I started with the Y axis on the base plate that also contains the power supply and main board. I thought it was nice that the Y axis had a detent at the home position. Wait, what? No, it's supposed to move freely without any flat spots. Problem number one. From my previous work in the machine tool industry, and also guidance from the internet, I know that the V wheels, like those used in these mid-market printers, must be adjusted very precisely to avoid wear, flat spots, and slop. Luckily, Creality provides all the tools needed to do the work, just no guidance. I dove into the Y-axis and found that not only were the rollers too tight, but there was a little manufacturing swarf that had built up on the rollers. Problem number two. I had a hard time cleaning the rollers until I glued some fine sandpaper to an angled wood block and gently cleaned all four rollers using the sandpaper. At the same time, I cleaned the V-rails of all debris. Finally, when everything was clean, I readjusted the two tensioning rollers using the eccentric nuts with the provided wrench. Take your time here. The rolls have to be just tight enough to allow them to slip just a little against the V-rail, but not so loose that there's slop in the table movement. If they're too tight, the table will have flat spots and the rollers will wear out prematurely. 
Next, it was time to attach the XZ gantry to the base plate. The fit looked pretty good, but I wasn't going to take any chances. I grabbed some sandpaper and did a quick deburr of the holes in the gantry. I fitted the gantry and attached the four machine screws loosely. Then I moved the Z-axis down near the bottom of the gantry and tightened the screws. By moving the Z-axis down, I was striving to keep the distance between the top and the bottom of the gantry legs the same, which would minimize binding in the future. As part of my alignment process, I placed a couple identical length blocks under both ends of the X-axis rail to make sure the Z-axis motors were properly timed. Luckily, they fit perfectly Otherwise, I would have retimed the lead screws. Then I adjusted the rollers for the X and Z axis. Installing the new direct drive extruder head was about as simple as it could be. It hangs from a bracket on the X axis carriage and is fastened in place with four small M3 machine screws. There's no need to crank down on them, just snug them up. It's not going anywhere. Then I installed the main wiring harness into a clip that hangs off of one of the Z-axis roller assemblies. Make sure the sticker is placed right in the middle of the clip to provide the required cable slack. Then I wired in and installed the control panel. It snaps into a plastic bracket that I attached to the base using three M4 machine screws. The next step was to install the filament holder and detector on top of the gantry. I plugged the connector into the detector. The detector tells the printer when filament has run out. Next, I installed the rest of the wire connectors into the stepper motors, limit switches, and filament detectors. Problem number three. I had moved the Z-axis down before I had removed the bottom half of the filament detector wire from its shipping position. The rollers had jammed the connector into the rail. No damage, but it took a long time to free the connector from its prison. Finally, I installed the main cable into the extruder head. Make sure the cable sits in the clip to provide strain relief as the extruder head moves. Before you apply power to the printer, it's extremely important to set the mains voltage. I'm in the US, so I removed the sticker and set the switch to 115 volts. Now it was time to do a manual bed alignment. I used a piece of paper and moved the z-axis down to just above the bed. Then I moved the x and y-axis to above each leveling screw and adjusted them slowly until there was the same amount of friction between the paper and the nozzle at all locations. I only made small movements since I didn't want to bend the plate. Finally, when I was happy, I powered up the printer and performed auto leveling. Pretty impressive. Let's try printing. First, I'll preheat the machine so I can load the filament. I cut it at an angle, hold down the release, and push it into the extruder head until some filament comes out of the nozzle. Problem number four. I didn't know which way the SD card was supposed to fit into the machine. It seemed to click nicely into place with the contacts facing down. However, no files showed up on the screen. When I put the card in the other way, it felt very loose, and again, no files showed up. Finally, after flipping the card over several times, files eventually showed up with the contacts in the up position. Now it was time to set up the printer job. 
Unfortunately, I got a little confused between retraction, z-axis offset, and the home position. Problem number five. I set the z-axis offset to the retraction distance of 0.8 millimeters. This meant that the nozzle was floating about 4 millimeters above the bed when the printer thought it was close to the bed. I tried printing about four times just to have a bird's nest of filament spewed all over the bed each time. I took a little time out to do some more research. I learned that I should set the Z position to zero and then use the Z axis offset to bring the nozzle down to within a paper thickness of the bed. This number wound up being about negative 3.3 millimeters. I started the print and set the printing speed to 50. I was pleasantly surprised that the printer finally did what I thought it should. In just a few hours, I had a happy cat. As cool as the cat was, I didn't buy the printer to make trinkets. I wanted to print stuff that I designed. Problem number six. I had to relearn 3D modeling. Twenty years ago, I dabbled with 3D modeling using TurboCAD, which is a 2D CAD program. It was pretty clunky, and conventional wisdom was to forget everything I knew about 2D CAD. So I decided to transition to FreeCAD. As I mentioned earlier, I had a goal of making a new foot for our sink drainer. It originally had four feet, but one fell off. I eventually will make it using TPU filament, which is more flexible, but I decided to make a proof of concept using PLA. I measured the foot and created a sketch in FreeCAD. Then I rotated the solid and cut a pocket out to accommodate the wire. Then I exported the part as an STL files. Next, I downloaded Cura, which is an industry standard slicing program. This takes the mathematical 3D STL model of the object and turns it into a series of G-code commands that actually drive the three axes of the printer and the extruder. I flipped the part on its end, sliced it, and then saved the file to the SD card. I started the print routine, and in 15 minutes, I had a foot. It fits fine, and I'll use it until I get some TPU filament in the future. Thanks for joining me today. I committed to learning 3D printing by purchasing a Creality Ender 3 S1. So far, I'm really happy with my choice. I had a few problems getting started, but nothing really too bad. I'm looking forward to making more projects using additive manufacturing. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!